So, Jibo, please introduce yourself. Sure. Hi. My name is Jibo. I'm a great <laughs> entertainer and storyteller. And I love to play with kids and help them learn. Watch this. It's, it's a platform. It's the first social robotics platform. So we want to enable, obviously, the creativity of our developer community to create all kinds of new apps and services and content that we can bring to life with this sort of emotional, interpersonal engagement of a social robot. So we can really make, make Jibo as, as great as we all believe it can and should be. There are tactile sensors over the body, so like when the little girl touched Jibo to say goodnight, that. it responds to that. And you know, what I found certainly a lot of my research with robots, people do communicative touch. It's a very natural kind of interaction that people have when something's physically and socially embodied. And on a lot of the research at the Media Lab and other you know, uh, research institutions around the world have found that people actually do better, they have better outcomes with social robots that are physically instantiated in the social embodiment than flat screens and other technologies. Our mind has different ways, different psychology when you think about things that are governed by having states of mind versus things that are governed by the laws of physics. And so the social intelligence, this emotional intelligence, that's evoked by technologies like autonomous robots that naturally trigger our brain to think about it as something having a mind, something that perceives and thinks and acts because of internal states versus being pushed on by gravity or whatnot, right? I'm even working on my sense of humor. <laughs> And so when your mind engages something in that way and is intuitively trying to make sense of it in that way, social robotics is about how do you support that? How do you make that really work for people? Because that's the natural way people are trying to make sense of it and understand it. And of course, we're living in this time where the demand of things like aging in place and chronic disease management and early childhood learning, you know, the demand is exceeding the human institutional ability to meet that need, and that's just projected to get worse over time. So we know technology has to step in. We know technology has to empower us in the home, not just in the institutions, but in the home. But it needs to be a technology for the best benefit to people.